to give a little bit of a report on dad before we jump into some prayer requests. Um, mom got a call from the neurologist today to officially give the MRI report, which he had on Friday. Mom had already seen the MRI report, but the neurologist did confirm his ventriculitis has gotten significantly worse. They don't know why. And it's, um, I think, of note to them that after being on 60 milligrams of prednisone for a week, that that inflammation was still noticeably worse. Um, so the neurologist um, went ahead and encouraged mom to reach out for palliative care, um, which we have done, and we met with them today. Um, Four Seasons came out to the house. A really wonderful lady met with us and really connected, I think, very well with mom. Um, she's very clearly a woman of faith, and she recognizes that we are people of faith, which is a, a blessing nowadays. Like, it's really nice to be able to make those connections. And she said something very interesting. She said, I, I don't want to step on a line here, but I feel like y'all are people of faith. And we said, yes, of course. Like, we never would have made it this far without the Lord. And she said, well, it, I've done this a lot. And I find it really significant. And she really just zeroed in on mom. She's like, I find it so significant. The way that you're able to talk about this and walk through this right now, mm -hmm. it is very obvious that you've been praying. And y'all, it is so awesome, first of all, to have a walk with God. But when you're going through a valley... And people outside that valley can say, wow, I can see you walking with God. And so um, it was really wonderful to have someone from the healthcare profession, such a wonderful uh, physician's assistant, to really uh, edify my mom and build her up, you know, telling her what wonderful care she's taking of dad and how, you know, how she's doing all the right things and, and she's reporting on all the right things and she's just like she was she was just so complimentary and you might think that things like that don't matter but when you do the same thing every day and the and your patient can't tell you then it it is hard yeah. and god is so faithful look at god yes you know, look at god doing something through a stranger to bless my mama and so I want to thank and praise the Lord for the right person coming out and for all of you who supported us in, in reaching out to Four Seasons. They have just been phenomenal. And uh, whatever this journey holds as we go forward, we know that the Lord is in control. Um, I know that it is difficult. Mo most people are, are not as exposed to death as I am because I'm a pastor. And so all of the families that have deaths and terminal illness in them, that, you know, they, they have a connection to me. And so I'm accustomed to sitting at the bedside of people like my father and spending time with families like myself and my mother, my brother, my husband. Um, and it is obviously very different on this side of it. But... It did, it has pressed the point home that we as a church family, when there are people who have loved ones that are saved and are dying, that we need to learn to be okay with that. I know that our tendency is to want to say that if people die, it's a lack of faith. But it isn't. Um, in fact, the Apostle Paul would have probably given his eye tooth to die instead of go through some of the things he went through. But, um, and the reason that I bring that up is because I know how it is to often have people outside, you know, our church family, you, you guys have been so amazingly supportive, but, you know, sometimes people from outside don't understand because they haven't walked through it. 
and they're like, oh, we're believing for a miracle. And it's like, that's cool. But you know what? If dad gets a miracle, he'll still be a 72-year-old man that's lost 50 pounds of body weight and still has cancer in his body. And may still have brain disease, even if he did have a miracle. And you know what's better than that? Is a glorified body. Yes. Meeting his son that was never born. Meeting all the saints that he's preached the funerals of. Being in a glorious place where he has no pain, no sorrow, and no sickness. Amen. So I want to thank you for how awesome y'all have been. Because this has been hard. This is one of us, right? And he's our daddy, you know? Gives the best hugs, you know? Um, you just don't know what you mean to us. And I don't say it enough how awesome y'all are, but every one of you in this very individual and unique way makes our lives so much brighter. It makes so much of a difference to see your face, to hear your words, to hug your neck, to worship with you. God, to worship together is the most amazing thing. Yes, amen. We've just been taken off this month, haven't we? <laughs> so please continue to keep Daddy in prayer. Continue to keep Mama in prayer. Continue to keep Levi and Katie in prayer. And Lee Becklin, he's not lost anybody before. Right. And this is, you know, a pretty big deal for a little guy. Also, continue to remember uh, our sweet sister Karen. Um, I want to give a praise report on her behalf. Her niece, Trina, had a stroke this week, had emergency surgery, and praise the Lord, they said she's gonna, they, she should fully recover, that the surgery went well, that it looks like it hasn't damaged anything permanently. And so I want to give thanks to the Lord because, woo, <laughs> that's awesome. Thank you, Trina. Any other prayer requests or praise reports? Mindy. I want to lift up a couple co-workers. Um, Tim, our maintenance guy, lost his brother. He, I think it was the last part of last week. He had a stroke and passed away, unfortunately. Mm. Um, but uh, my co-worker, Jennifer, today was our last day working together, but Monday is her last day. She's kind enough to stay for, oh. while I go on this little trip. And um, but that the Lord would bless her and her family and, and her new job and stuff. Um, for my new co-worker, Michelle, um, she seems to be a lot smarter than I am. <laughs> she's <laughs> probably going to... Hey, that's great. She's probably going to take my job. And that's awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. But I, uh, I knew when I met her and got to talking... And I've been playing around with the, not really playing around, but praying around with the idea of what God has in store for me. Um, and he may want me to leave. And I knew I wasn't going to be comfortable leaving and be okay with that until I knew I had somebody who I felt confident could do my job and, and take, take my place. Not that it's hard or anything, right. but um, Jennifer was happy being a receptionist, and I knew she was never going to be the office manager. So praise the Lord. So anyway, I'm thankful for that. Just bless her. Um, we do that. We're, we'll be leaving tomorrow morning for Myrtle Beach, um, spending yes. a few few days there. Yeah. I hope it's so beautiful. Add well. to my team. That's <laughs> right. And um, anyways, <laughs> can't try to get longer. Um, but traveling mercies and that we would all enjoy ourselves as a family. Um, pray for David and, and just us as a household. Um, Philip Lexi and, and, and his family. Um, and God's will in all of us and just, you know, that we would all just keep wanting to be fed by God and, and keep a thirsty heart and, and that God would, you know, I know he's going to feed us and, and give us drink that we need, but if we're not hungry and thirsty, he's going to be a gentleman and that's true. leave us in a, in a state that we yeah. that we, we need to be growing Amen. and getting closer to him, not staying in a, in a sneaky pool. Yes, amen. Amen. Anyone else? Gail. I have an announcement. Somebody lost their ring. Last week, let me know. Because <laughs> I found it on the table. Um, and then I have a praise report. And I just want to say I'm thankful that Clay like, prays over us before he leaves for work and that he's yeah. startled from sunrise. 
<laughs> I got killed me and Ash today in a, in a car accident. I would have hit like three cars. Oh, so Lord. So God protected all those people and kept us safe. Amen. Thank, Amen. You. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Awesome. Yeah? Um, if you didn't notice on Facebook yet, um, Loretta called last night and her mother June passed away last night. Um, she's been in and out of the hospital since Harry passed and, and so they all had to take turns um, caring for her. And so um, there will be a memorial service sometime in August. They have yet to plan that. Uh, so um, it'll be at uh, June's church. Um, pray for Mark and Laura. Um, they're here enough to come back and she's going to see her grandbaby and um, they're going to come visit us. Um, he knows he's preaching now. <laughs> um, they do feel like they are under attack, so please keep them in your prayers. Um, pray for the Mendozas who are taking a little time off this week that they can uh, have restoration in their bodies and their minds and their Amen. spirits. Um, pray for the work in Nepal and in Honduras and Kenya, mm -hmm. um, and here in Asheville. Amen. 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 Patrice? Um, I got prayed before. Okay. I've got three weeks without a cigarette. Woo! Also, Patrice has a friend that we need to lift up in prayer, or a loved one of a friend, um, whose name is Cindy. So let's please be remembering her in prayer. She needs deliverance in Jesus' name. Deb? Um, please <clears throat> keep my mom in prayer for continued healing. And Glenda? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Let's continue to remember Glenda. The Lord would just continue to lift her up and, uh, and help her get through all of this cancer treatment stuff, in Jesus' name. Kitty? Um, I have a Thanksgiving um, prayer for, um, I have a, it's only for one, me, one day of the week, but it'll fill in my week. I have a second client now. Oh, praise the Lord! Home, and you need to pray for her because her God is not the true God, the creator, and um, not Jesus, so um, praying that um, she does have another worker who I know personally who is a big believer and as well, so um, that that we can um, help her know Jesus. Amen. So, yeah. Just by how we are, and so um, also um, Linda, who I you know we prayed for before, she has you know it's so weird. The more she's been in the hospital, the more things have come up for her um, that she's needed the hospital for. Um, she's had, uh, she had a kidney um, disease, kidney, kidney stone, and they had to go through an intrusive process and she had to go under um, anesthesia, which she is not in physical well-being to be able to do that. So she's had to struggle with that. And um, so th they can't, like they wanted to dissolve them, but they can't. So oh. it's really not good for her. And then um, she just, we just found out she has MRSA. Oh so, man! Yeah, so yeah. We can really pray a lot for her. Bless her heart. Yeah. And I have a number of uh, friends who are in um, deep difficulty with their finances. Okay. All right. Let's remember those names. Nate. Um, four people. Um, Jeremy and Dalton, my yeah. friends that have come before. Mm -hmm. I'm like, um, keep praying for them for salvation. We want to keep coming back, and. I have no doubt that if I could get Henry and Heather, my niece and nephew, mm -hmm. into church one time, yeah. they would be sold out. Right. They would come back, they, they would love it. Yeah. So just keep praying for them. All right. And um, yeah, God, it's going to happen. Yes. In Jesus' name. They're going to be put among the prayer list for sure. Yes, yeah. in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Diane? Um, I, we have a friend named Evelyn who's dealing with gout. She has stage four um, liver problems. Was it liver? Yeah. Kidney. No, excuse me. Yeah. Kidney. Okay. She's better in that regard, but she's still dealing with the gout, um, and she does still have some kidney problems. 
and also for Terry in that um, tomorrow supposedly is supposed to be his last day of care partners, but we haven't heard a word. They're trying to get him into a place. We want him to go to Aston Park, which is also the closest one to us, and um, just for him to be a light. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. But he needs all the therapy he can get yes. before he comes home. Yes. So we're hoping he can get some more. Yes. And our insurance will cover it. Amen. Yes. yes, in Jesus' name. DW? Yeah. Okay, let's remember Charles for sure. Deb? Um, I had asked you to pray for my cousin and Joe. Yeah. Um, he had triple um, cardiac surgery, triple bypass, and he posted on Facebook. Um, he said he had his post op visit um, and everything looks good. You can see the wires that are keeping his sternum together. Oh. It's like, cool. Um, <laughs> he can increase his lifting, and the doctor told him to use common sense. He prayed. But, um, but he's, he's rejoicing because he was told he could drive again. He was not expecting that this soon. That's amazing. Amen. Because he is usually, if they have a dear friend who's been taking care of his wife who has Alzheimer's, early onset, so usually he's been the primary caregiver. Yeah. And, you know, he thought the only thing they could do together was, like, go for drives. Mm -hmm. uh, so he's... So he can do that again. That he can do that. That's cool. great. That is awesome. Thank you, Jesus. All right, John? We need to keep the meeting for yes. going on an extended trip. Yes. With all these different connections she has to make, and it's, yes. it's going to be rigorous for someone her age. <laughs> Yeah. You wouldn't have said that in front of her, would you? It's going to be rigorous for someone her age. She'll tell me. We are ratting you out. <laughs> I am. I no, mean, we do need to talk about his wife. Well, he said we need to pray for Sister Juanita because she's going to be starting oh, her trip God. tomorrow with, and it's going to be a lot of connections that she's going to make, and it's going to be very <laughs> rigorous for someone her age. That woman, <laughs> around, that woman moving around might start a revival. I know. That's what I think. That's what God is actually doing. Juanita's going down to Lakeland, Florida, to see her sister, and then she and her sister are going all the way up on Amtrak to New York, oh, and then wow. to Niagara Falls. I'm pretty sure we're about to see a major East Coast revival breakout. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I'm guessing. <laughs> and Sister Juanita is on the move. <laughs> Did I miss anybody, Diane? Um, uh, Deb, remind me, we have a friend whose husband just had a hernia operation. He doesn't know the Lord. He thinks he does, but he doesn't. He watches John Hagee and he thinks that's okay. That's it. So we need to pray for him for salvation, but also for healing. In Jesus' name. Too. Yeah, absolutely. And I just have, excuse me, one other little thing. I, I think it would be good. We pray for our praise and worship team. We need yes. to have members yes. and musicians. Yes. Um, yes. And of course, yes. we need you. And, and I love that you're recognizing that those that have stepped out to become a part of that have really been under attack. Yeah. I mean, you can literally walk in on Sunday morning and see that people are under attack. So, uh, with that said, who wants to be part of it? <laughs> <laughs> so, with that said, um, Ginger, can you sing? <laughs> yes, she can. Uh oh! Yes, she can. Uh oh! Uh -oh. <laughs> Come on, Ginger! Hey, we do practice here every square. That's right. We need some more we men. Need some we do need some more men. Hey, they kicked me out. <laughs> we can just give you a shaker. Yes, he's been having a hard time, man. He's uh, he's he's had ear, nose, and throat appointments, and he's been he's just had a series of unfortunate health issues. So please continue to keep him in prayer, in Jesus' name. All right, Ken. One last. Um, we're beginning the process of uh, changing our website platform and it's a uh, it's all got a lot of moving parts because this is going to take us into uh, a new website platform a new uh, back end for uh, online giving it will give us some other back end um, tools for the church 
but it's also going to give us a church app. And so there's there's a lot of moving parts, and so just pray that it goes smoothly, Amen. and that I, under, I understand what they're talking about. We're talking. <laughs> <laughs> you got this. Yeah, that is very cool. Patrice, uh, go ahead. Um, I'm big going to a psychologist who used to be a southern. Me- Southern Baptist minister, and then he left that and went into psychology and went to the Unitarian Church. And every time I go online with him, he asks me, how was church? (laughs) And he'll say, how was Bible study? Oh, that's nice. And a little unusual. (laughs) And I told him, it was wide open Sunday. <laughs> and he said, are you for real? And I said, yes, I'm for real. Yeah, that's good. You know, just about ready to do. <laughs> and it's interesting. It's just interesting that he keeps asking. Yep. Yes. Praise the Lord. You never know what doors might be opening. Yep. Yeah. Alicia? <laughs> um, so, y'all might not know. I'm the only one that's not adopted out of all five of my siblings. And um, July 14th was my um, brother's birthday. We sent him a card. Mom helped me pick it out. But their foster mom and dad won't let me have any contact with them. Okay. And I don't know how long it's been, but it's really hard for me. Yeah. I understand that, baby. We'll be praying. We will be praying for you. We'll be praying for you. In Jesus' name. All right, let's take these needs to the Lord in prayer. I just, before we go, um, Daniel and CJ, or Cynthia are watching, and they just wanted to remind Kevin that Daniel hasn't forgotten about you, <laughs> and for, and he hasn't forgotten about us, and Yay. they Praise keep the Lord. praying for us, and they want um, us to know that they love us and they're praying for us. So too. continue to pray for Daniel and Cynthia, in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you so much. For all that you are doing in our midst, Lord, we thank you, Lord Jesus, because you are the keeper of our hearts, Lord. Lord, we ask that your sweet spirit would move, and that all these names that we brought before you, all these requests, all of these situations, that you would be in the midst. In Jesus' name, Lord, that you would be a comfort, Lord, to this family, because you know how hard it is, Lord Jesus, to be separated, Lord, from those that you love. Lord Jesus, we ask that you would be a comfort and a strength to Alicia, that she would turn her heart, Lord Jesus, and her mind towards you for comfort, Lord, and that you would be that that fills her heart, Lord Jesus, and brings comfort. And Lord, we know that one day, Lord Jesus, she will have contact with her siblings. And we thank and praise you, Lord, for that day that is coming. Lord, those that are sick, we ask that you would bring healing to them, Lord. That you would bring comfort to those, Lord Jesus, that are in distress. That you would continue to bless and move and minister to each in our church body. And in these circles, Lord, that our lives have had. Because we want to make a difference, Lord Jesus, in them for your name's sake. And we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Chapter 20, and we're supposed to be doing verses 28 to the end, but could you back up to 26? Mm-hmm. Go ahead, Kevin. You look like you want to read. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it's Acts. Um, I'm in Acts 20, so let me let me get to the right chapter. Yeah, Acts 20. I'm, I'm in 21, sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm wondering why there are 40 verses. All right. Acts 20, 26 through 38. Therefore I declare to you today that I am innocent of the blood of any of you. For I have not hesitated to proclaim to you the whole will of God. Keep watch over yourselves and all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Be shepherds of the church of God, which he bought with his own blood. I know that after I leave, savage wolves will come in among you and will not spare the flock, even from your own number. Men will arise and distort the truth in order to draw away disciples after them. So be on your guard. 
Remember that, that for three years I never stopped warning each of you day, night and day with tears. Now I commit you to God and to the word of his grace, which can build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. I have not coveted anyone's silver or gold or clothing. You yourselves know that these hands of mine have supplied my own needs and the needs of my companions. In everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak. Remembering the words the Lord Jesus himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. When Paul had finished speaking, he knelt down with all of them and prayed. They all wept as they embraced him and kissed him. What grieved what grieved them most was his statement that they would never see his face again. Oh, man. Wow. Then they accompanied him to the ship. Okay. So, what do you see God doing in this passage? Preparing the church. For? Um, for what's coming against him. For people coming in and trying to, not, to tell them uh, false doctrine. Okay. And to guard themselves. To guard themselves. He's also preparing them for the leader. loss of their leader. Right. Yeah. 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 Physically and possibly mm -hmm. spiritually with the attack. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's preparing. And that's them. that is really a huge thing. Like it was definitely a God ordained way to go about this, because I. I think all of us have seen leaders of, whether it be a spiritual leader or leaders of organizations that do not plan for their removal, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. right? And as such, then when they are removed, you know, yes. voluntarily or otherwise, yes. then it crumbles <coughs> because there was no plan set in place. I love that Paul is like, I'm not going to see you again. I want to prepare you for what comes next. Mm -hmm. Exactly. What else do you see? Well, I think Paul encouraged them by reminding them how he lived among them. Yeah. And that it was the proper way to do it. And also, of course, at the end, <coughs> it's turning again to prayer and ministry. So we see the preparation for a change in guard. We see the admonition to be careful and to be watchful. But he wanted to make sure they were watchful for themselves yes. as well as for others. Yes. Because oftentimes, particularly mm -hmm. nowadays in the me generation, yes. mm -hmm. we're only watching out for our own good. Right. But we're responsible, yes. To, to watch out for our own salvation, but we're also responsible for those the Lord has put in contact with us. Amen. No matter what our position is in the right. church. Right, that's good. Yeah, you don't have really to be good. in leadership. Mm -hmm. You still have a responsibility to your brethren and your sisters Amen. in Amen. Christ. That's so true. Yeah. We have to give a reason for the hope that lies within us. That's but, right. When we are approaching our home zone, how wonderful it would be that we can follow this pattern yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. and be an encouragement to our family and friends yeah. and whoever, mm -hmm. and leave a, a, a good size hole. Yeah. Right. Leave a good yeah. size hole, yes. <laughs> yeah. I think it's amazing after the, he's going through all this, but he makes sure he lets them know about charity. It almost seems mm -hmm. like he's talking about the weak, blessed, more, more blessed to give than to receive. Yeah. Have faith, hope, and charity, but the greatest of these is charity. Yeah. The Bible says, and that is love in action. And, and Amen. It's it's very important, and and so he admonished them to um, to you know remember the weak, and, mm -hmm. and God loves a cheerful giver. So that it's you know amazing that he put that in there just to yeah. remind them. That charity is important. Yeah. In light of saying, I took care of myself. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. 
you realize I work for myself. I supply my own needs right. and those who are with me. That's what he said. But it is better to give than to receive. So yeah. if you see someone in need, mm -hmm. it's your responsibility to, right. to lend that hand. Yeah. And it's not always necessary or it's not always monetary. Right. You know, we always think monetary, but giving of your time, yeah. Yeah. giving of your gifts, mm -hmm. giving of your knowledge, mm -hmm. giving of your hospitality, all of that is important to show charity. Yeah. Yeah. Charity being love, right? Yes. Amen. Giving of your encouragement, your encouragement. Is, is a big one. You know, he, he talks to them. He, he doesn't shy away from the difficult conversations. And he doesn't... And none of them, uh, according to what's written here, um, try to, you know, if you walk by faith, you know, that's not, you know, they try to tell them not to go to Jerusalem. They, they didn't tell them, well, walk by faith, it's not going to happen. They didn't do that. They, they accepted that that's just, that is part of life. Mm -hmm. But they weren't either afraid of hugging, of crying together. Right. Of feeling those emotions and showing those emotions and just being open and transparent with each other. Right. And too often we get to church and we try to act like we're all perfect. Right. And we need to, we, we don't need to be a mess all the time, but we need to be open with each other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Quench not the spirit. Yeah. Take heed, therefore, to under yourself. The concern is that. He needs to live who he really is, like Paul did. He needs, he's now going to be an example people are going to stare at a lot more than they did in the past. And so he needs to show a life like Paul lived, because he's one. You know. And these wolves are going to come. And the hard part about it is the, the babes in Christ are very susceptible. You know. It's an area where people travel a lot, and Jews come through, and they're going to try to tell them, you know, forget that. You, know, you, you shouldn't listen to that. False prophets, you know, false teachers. He sees, he sees all these things coming. So I think it's a big warning. And quick, make yourself right because you're gonna have a tough time coming up with the obstacles. Right. Mm -hmm. And he's really careful to say that the attack is coming. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's coming from without, mm -hmm. which is where you would expect to look for it. Yes. Mm -hmm. But it's also coming from within. There you mm -hmm. go. And you need to be wise. You need yeah. to be wary. You need to stay focused on God. So yes. You, and know His word so you can identify that for what it is. Right. And it's a caution to those that would try to bring attention to themselves and brand themselves mm -hmm. instead of branding God. You know, it's right. about God. You keep mm -hmm. all our eyes focused mm -hmm. that way. Yes. Yeah. So it's, a, it's a warning in both directions. Yeah. 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 What you were saying a minute ago about um, seeing the need and taking care of it, or being responsible, the Bible says for a, a born-again believer, if you know to do good and do it not, that sin to you. Right, right. So it's, it's, it's serious. Right, right. It, it is, is, for serious. sure. Yeah. 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 And it's important, you know, oftentimes I think, and I know I'm guilty of this, I think what little I can help with it. It's not going to make a hill of beans a difference. But I don't know that because right. my little bit with somebody else's little bit may make up the difference. Right. You see? <laughs> so whatever it is that you have, you can't discount it. Yeah. Yeah. Build as much in God as yeah. Amen. Yeah. Um, and I think it's interesting the way you pointed out the juxtaposition between him saying I've taken care of myself. I've worked for myself. I've worked. I've mm -hmm. taken care of myself. But you need to take care of people because that's important mm -hmm. but he also kind of does that essentially with where he's saying watch out because there's going to be those from without mm -hmm. that try to disrupt by by essentially being um uh predators mm -hmm. on people with and that men from within of your own selves shall men arrive arise speaking uh perverse things to draw away disciples after them isn't it fascinating that Paul literally says, 
Um, here's some things to be paranoid about. Now go love people and pour out on them and take care of them weak and don't look at them with suspicion. Have a nice day. Yes. <laughs> because like you kind of are like, well, um, who, who is it? <laughs> who is it? Like, I mean, you know, mm -hmm. but you don't know that. Right. And, and that's because everyone has to make their own choice, right? You, yeah. you don't know. We all have the opportunity to, to follow Christ or to go astray. Right. Um, so it's so neat that God really does call us in the same kind of way, just like, so I want you to be wise as serpents, harmless as doves, you know, yeah. I want you to cover a multitude of sins with your love, mm -hmm. you know, because that's what it takes to deal with people, right. you know. For sure. right. John, did you have something? Yes, you know, some of the dangerous part of the inside of the church is there are people convicted of sin but not converted. And those are people who get influential. Oh, and they can turn people to strange things. You know, there, there was a time when the Bible said if, if someone does something like that, you should remove them until they can prepare themselves to come back with counsel. You know? right. But you have to recognize that. That's really good. And, and you know, they're detrimental to new babes. Right. You know? So what John was pointing out is that, that a lot of those folks that are within that become a problem and start speaking things that are perverse are people that are convicted of sin, but they don't repent of sin, okay? And so rather than do that, they try to justify why it's okay, and so they try to turn people's thoughts to being like, this is okay, to make them feel better, and that is, in, that is incorrect. It's interesting, um, someone from Livingstone posted today, Old Church in Ohio, posted today a little uh, video clip where this guy was preaching, and basically he was saying, you know, so many people will claim a denomination, uh -huh. and they would claim a belief. Yeah, yeah, that was good. Yes, yeah. Yeah. But, yes, okay, so that's the revelation you had, but when the Lord gave another revelation, why didn't you move with that? Ooh. If you want to walk with God, or do you want to walk with your denomination, basically? Yeah. Wow. What yeah. you're saying. And I thought that was like, I reposted it, and I don't yeah. repost a lot of stuff. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> so. But because it's true that, you know, we, un we know, we think we know the mind of God. And to a certain extent, we do know the mind of God. But when the mind of God diverges from what you think it should be, where are you going? Uh oh. Are you going to follow that mind of God? Right. Or are you going to persist in what you think oh. should be his mind? As long as it lines up with the word. Right. Exactly. Right. <laughs> the walk with God is not a straight path. Straight path. Right. It's, <laughs> it's, you you got to be comfortable with change to right. walk with God. Right. Mm -hmm. Because he's transforming us mm -hmm. day to day. Right. Yeah. He's going to make us whole. Yes. In the last days, people will um, have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof yeah. from such turn away. The power of God is, in my opinion, Pentecost, the, the Holy Spirit. Yeah. That that's, you know, and they deny that. They, they want to quench the Spirit. They don't want <coughs> that worship, or maybe they do, but they will um, keep themselves teachers having itching ears that will tell them you know, what they want to hear. a lie and be damned, uh, because that's what they want to hear. Mm -hmm. and, and it's sad, but it, we got to be careful because it's, it's, this is, a, these are the last days. Yeah. And, and there are a lot of people that have claimed, but it's, like you said, if it's not in the word, you know, I don't, I don't believe it. If I can't, right. if it's not in the right. Holy Bible, that's right. hang it's it right. up. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> like the Bereans in the New yeah. Testament, they, they listened right. to the, to the preaching, yep, and then they went and studied scripture. That's right. That's and they what it came says. Back and said, "Yes, you're right." Yep, and they believed and, and were added right. to yeah. the body of Christ. But yeah, it, it's, we, we got to be careful. The devil is bringing an onslaught mm -hmm. against us in every possible way he can. Yeah, and he's had thousands of years of manipulating people. Mm -hmm. So, he, and he doesn't sleep. He works day and night, and uh, so we got to be diligent and uh, and firm. Amen. Okay, so we have John, Debbie, and then Diane. One of the problems I see is that 
Jews that are going to travel through town. Mm -hmm. They're going to go to the new babes and the people who aren't mature yet. You're going to tell them what they should go back to the law, mm -hmm. something that they're be, that they're comfortable with. Right. And you're going to try to tease them away from from that and go to ritualism, which they're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. <coughs> exactly. Yeah. He was saying that the Jews that came through tried to have the new converts follow the law instead of the grace of God. Yeah. Um, many years ago, Sister Douglas wrote a song called Everlasting Word. Beautiful song. And on that same day, Brother Douglas preached about where does the wolf get the sheep's clothing? Oh, oh wow. wow. It was quite a message. But at the very end, he answered the question and he said, he gets he gets the clothing from the sheep. He skins the sheep. Mm. That sheep has to be one that's outlined. He's not in the middle of everything that's going on. He's right. not with mm -hmm. the other sheep. He's right. on the fringes. Yeah. That's the one that's in danger. Yeah. Yeah. And Jesus. Yeah. it could be somebody that we spend a lot of time with, you know, and all of a sudden they're not around. And they're in danger. But we're in danger if we don't have the discernment of spirits good, yeah. True. to know do we need to listen to them? Do we need to pray for them? We definitely need to pray for them. But we also need to be where the shepherd is. And God gave shepherds to the church. He's calling us the flock in this scripture. And we're supposed to be listening and letting the shepherd guide us. That shepherd is supposed to feed us with the word. Mm -hmm. And we have to be listening to that. We need to be with the other sheep. And <clears throat> I don't remember if it's Shekinah or if it's her dad who said that you have to drive goats, but you have to lead sheep. Yes. So, yeah. But the sheep have to follow. Yeah. yeah. That's a good word, Dad. That, that sheep on the fringe, what you're talking about, to me, that brings to mind the a dangerous point in someone's walk with God in between being. Uh, uh, repenting and having remission of sins and baptizing in Jesus' name and then receiving the Holy Ghost. Because that time where their house is clean, it, the devil will flee, but he will remember them and come back. And when he comes back, seeing the house clean, he will bring seven more demons with him. Mm -hmm. um, so that the, <laughs> it's seven times worse, but it, it, it's I don't know to me, it's a dangerous place. Well, I think also that it just sometimes things happen in people's lives that sometimes it's circumstances, sometimes it's jobs. <clears throat> I've seen the Lord bless someone with their own business, and it was it, it could have been a blessing. Right. And because they were working so hard on Sundays, we you know they just kind of lost track of priorities. Mm -hmm. And I know that it's easier to think of things as being like, oh, the things that separate us from the center are big things, but it's usually not. It's usually something small. Mm -hmm. It's usually just, I don't feel like it. And then that compounds to, well, now I'm, I'm actually, I actually am sick. And then it's like, well, but then this other thing happened. And those things compound until one day you wake up and you can't remember how long it's been and you know and it can be that with anything in your walk with God whether it's your Bible reading or your prayer life or you're coming together with the, the, the members of the body of Christ or whatever it is I know there's a lot of people that that get word from you know preachers online and preachers on TV and stuff like that and um, and that's fine it doesn't really matter to me but What's interesting about that is if you're not careful, you will feel like that fast food is okay to eat all the time. <laughs> and you won't remember that, that your mom is in the kitchen and she actually cares about the vitamins that go in your body. Mm, and she's good. the one that will make sure you have vegetables. <laughs> she's the one that wants to make sure. And the reason for that is... Is that person online, they don't know you. And they do not pray for you. And they do not give account for you. And so I, I caution people to be wise 
because you can fill up on fast food and then you don't want what mama cooked. If you're always watching and never part, you're not part of the body, you're just watching somebody. That's true. Well, you, bring, you make people feel ashamed. Well, I missed two services and I'm, I'm embarrassed that that will shame us, you know? Right. Well, you yeah. know. And that shouldn't be the case. Like when somebody comes in, if it's been five years. Oh, amen. Hold your neck. <laughs> if it's been 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, right. welcome home, man. Right. Welcome right. home. Yes. Yeah. All right. I never get Diane. Go ahead. <laughs> This is really good because I think we really have to zero in on how can the elect be deceived? You know, mm -hmm. how that the days are not cut short. Right. So the little foxes, that's good. Little the little vine, and all these things that we're mm -hmm. talking about. But now we have a new challenge. I was listening to somebody, um, I think it was on television, it doesn't matter, but the point is it's about AI. AI very possibly rewrite the Bible mm -hmm. and change a lot of things here and there. So this is another thing, especially for new people that don't all really know the word. So that's true. So yeah. everybody get a paper Bible. Yes. 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 Right. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. Right. Even though I always use my phone. <laughs> but get a paper I have a paper Bible yes. though. <laughs> Some denominations lost their young people because they were so taught, caught up in the religiosity of the legal um, rules and all that, and they left the love behind. Yeah. And so the teenagers and everybody, and this even happened with my own father. My father disowned me because I did not follow his legalistic rules. And on his deathbed, he still didn't um, forgive me. But God taught me that I had to forgive him. Amen. And I think that, you know, a lot of times we let religiosity come in. Them. What is that saying, Jay, that don't be so holy that you blow up? What, what's the, you know what I'm trying to say? Remember? Oh, it, uh, he it's talked so about if you're all word, yeah. you'll dry up. If you're all spirit, you'll blow up. <laughs> but if you're spirit and truth, you will go up. The Bible, she was talking about being rewritten. There's a big difference between interpretation and translation. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people get it mixed up. The Bible says it's not for any private interpretation. Mm -hmm. you, 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 it, prayer, um, fasting, um, having a minister, a pastor that is no, in the truth, you know, yeah. and and from Genesis to Revelation, you know, uh, if you add anything to the Bible, <laughs> all the plagues in the Bible will be added unto you. If you take away from the Bible, your name will be taken out of the Lamb's Book of Life. And so it, it's, it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing, but it, it's holy, and, and we have to make sure that <laughs> we know the difference between interpretation and translation. So Amen. I just wanted to interject that. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> So we talked about being watchful. We talked about the attack that's coming, and that we need to be on guard. And I had written down here that God will supply and protect, no matter what. That's good. We yeah. depend on him. He will, he will supply and protect. We talked about being responsible for ourselves, as well as the weak among us. Mm -hmm. We talked about ch charity. And Gail has something to add. I was just going to say, um, the definition of overseer has overshadow because they were all called to cover and protect. Mm -hmm. yeah. to cover each other. That's Amen. Good. That's good. 
And it, isn't that what it means to be members one of another? Is that the Lord really makes us responsible for each other? Right. And it's called love. <laughs> <laughs> it's called love, yeah. Yeah, you gotta use my brothers. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, can we see a sin to avoid? Coveting. Coveting. Complacency. Complacency. Don't lead people away from Christ. Leading people away from Christ. Not supplying when you can. Mm, yeah. Any other sin to avoid? Don't lead yourself away from Christ. Oh, for sure. <laughs> right. yeah. Amen. Any others? Okay. Promises to claim. It's more blessed to give than to receive. <laughs> he loves a cheerful giver. Mm -hmm. That he will supply and protect us. Mm -hmm. Yes. You mean like when you want them, they'll be there right on time. Amen. And that's an ample warning for what's going to take place. Say one more time. And there's ample warning for what's coming. He gives yeah. us ample warning for what's yeah, coming. That's, that's good. Yeah. Yes. He designed us as relational in, in uh, family so we'd have encouragement when we needed it. Yes. But then we have to be open to receiving that yes. encouragement mm -hmm. also. So that probably would, the sin to avoid in that case would be pride. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it says specifically in verse 32 that he commended you to God and to the word of his grace mm -hmm. which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all of them which are sanctified mm -hmm. so that is a promise that God's grace and his word will build us up mm -hmm. that it will give us an inheritance among those who are set apart Yes. Example. There's no weapon formed against us that can prevail. Amen. Notice it doesn't say the weapon will not be formed. That's correct. Right. Right. Yeah. Examples to follow. After he spoke to them, he kneeled down and prayed with them. Yes. Oh, and they good. prayed with him. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. And they went with him as far as they could go. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. As that's far really as wow. they could go. Wow, that's good. Yeah. yeah. We've got to learn to walk with people as far as we can go. Mm -hmm. That's good. So the, and support the weak. Yeah. Right. I'm sorry. To support yourself and support the weak. Right. Yes. That's a great example. Yeah. If somebody asks you to go one mile, go two. Right. As long as they're going in a good direction. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's right. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. yeah. Any other examples to follow? He supplied his own needs and yeah. the needs of his companions. Right. So he was not slothful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, he declared the counsel, all the counsel of God. Yes, he declared all the counsel of God. Even the hard truths yes. he was willing to say. And, and that's hard. Yes. That's really hard because you, as a human, you worry about not being received. Yes. Or being rejected. But, yeah. It is what it is. Sometimes the scripture is for reproof, for correction. Mm -hmm. We have to be humble and willing to, you know, obey the word. Right. And, and, and see it. Yeah. make necessary changes in our life when we grow. Right. Yeah. And then all of your grace. Amen. And we can we can rest assured the Lord will grow us. Oh yeah. Oh for sure. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. For example, he labored for his needs and he wasn't a burden to yeah. anyone anywhere he went. Anywhere he went, exactly. It commands to keep. Watch out for the for the flock, yes. Mm -hmm. Be on guard. Be yes. on guard. Remember the words of the Lord Jesus. That's the, good, yeah. Remember the words of the Lord Jesus. Okay. Mm -hmm. Pray. Mm -hmm. Yes. One for another. 
Yeah. And remember that it's more blessed to, to give than to receive. Yes. <laughs> Anything else? Any other the spurious comments anyone wants to make? <laughs> yes, I have one. That would be great to meet up with Paul someday. That would be cool. We I would. just can't wait to meet him. <laughs> that would be neat. And Peter. Yeah. Go <laughs> fishing. <laughs> when, when Jesus was put in the tomb, Peter was like, well, that's it. I go fishing. I'm going fishing. That's yeah. right. <laughs> Verse 36. <clears throat> he kneeled down and prayed with them. He's kneeling down. To the Jews, especially, it was respect and reverence. And even connected with Jesus, he said, pray with respect and reverence. You'll be heard. You'll be yes. heard by reverence. Reverence, yes. Not just by need or wish. Yeah, and, and also um, what John said, I, it makes me think of a friend of mine who is um, Jewish to a point, but she said that um, when she uh, she went with a friend to a church a while ago, and um, she would never pray the way Christians do by getting on our knees because. From what she understands from her lifelong, um, of, a lot of times it was secular, but she understands more about it now. That they kind of they stand and you know go back and forth like this. That they do never get on their knees. So well, isn't that interesting? That's interesting. Then yeah, yeah, it changed. Yeah. yeah, and it also reminds me of the story um, Jesus told about the. The publican and the Pharisee that were praying. Oh, do you know how good I am? Right, the Pharisee standing and doing just that thing, right? That, you know, praying like, I'm so glad I'm not like this guy. And that guy is like buried. Like, right. he's just like, I am. Right. Right. Yeah. Kneeling shows humility. And right. you see such pride in following, still following the law of the Jews. You know, God brought his grace. Fulfilled all that right. for freedom, <laughs> and to tie yourself to all that um, when you don't have to, when you don't have to, right. and to follow it as if it's your God and not God Himself. You know, mm -hmm. all the law and the prophets are wrapped up in this. That's Most right. Our neighbors, that's us. Right. All the law and the prophets. Right. That's, that's right. Mm -hmm. I still I still that all the time. Yeah. Yeah, I really do. Yeah. It's like. All the law and the prophets. It well, the neighbors myself, so. Yeah. But you know, in, in this conversation, <clears throat> what we need to keep in mind is that the Lord knows our heart mm -hmm. and our yes. intent. So for those who cannot do one position or the other, the right. position is not important. Right, right. yes. It's Absolutely. The, it's the communion with it's God. Just, that's right. It's what's going on there. Yeah. 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 rose from before the altar of the Lord where he had been kneeling. Right. And there was a powerful yeah, yeah that was that was present amazing. God. Yeah. Yeah. We don't know when they started standing prayers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know either. Mm -hmm. I I'm, she said she's not sure when they started doing the standing. I think we don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We, we don't know. Right, right. God loves a broken and contract spirit and the humbleness, like you were saying. Yes, that amen. It's important, you know, and, and when, we're, when we're broken, God can put us in the potter's wheel and make something out of it. If, if, if we think of a whole in of ourselves, if we think highly of ourselves that we should, that's, that's no good. You know, God's a gentleman. He, you know, you can push him out, you know. Yeah. And I have numerous friends who have uh, such serious pain issues and stuff, they right, never yeah. got deep. Yeah. But I had one friend, when she, uh, actually two, when they have been able to just look over onto their stomach, that's their most, you know, earnest, sincere, mm -hmm. deeply yeah. devoted position. Mm -hmm. Whereas for me, that wouldn't be, but they, for them, it's definitely wow. the most they can do. Yeah. 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 It's not 
not after form or fashion. That's right. It's yeah. after our heart. Amen. Amen. Anything else before we dismiss? I have one. Um, um, like, like she said, um, some people lose their, like she lost her father. Um, I felt that because she lost her son to games and stuff. Nowadays, people are losing their kids to the internet and Facebook and all that. Yeah, there's a lot of things in our society that that disrupt relationships. Mm -hmm. Even though you might have forty thousand friends, right? You have no relationship. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. No matter what he pays, he never sees him in the streets. Oh, yeah. Yes. 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 Amen. That's right. He was steadfast. Yes. Amen. There's something about that external looking. If we're always internal, looking at, at what I'm going through, right? We, we never get to express the love of God. Right. Wow, that's good. That's, good. Yes. that's really good. That's good. And, and the more you make yourself available to others, the more others see Christ yeah. mm -hmm. in you. Yeah. Yeah. Those are asking questions. Why do you do this? Well, why don't you do that? And if God will open the door, and you know, it, it's it's wonderful when people ask you a question because that's I love it because I'm like, okay, it is the door for you, sure. Yeah, it's on now. Yeah, it's on now. You're gonna get saved. <laughs> <laughs> You're about to get born again. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, All right. Does anyone know what today is? Today's the, is today the, the 19th. 19th. Thank you, Kitty. The 19th, okay. All right. I'm just trying to remember where are we in the month. I don't know what the announcements are. <laughs> well, we are, we are going to be uh, gathering together on Sunday to worship the Lord. Um, so excited with what God's doing in our services. It's like, we really have gotten to a point where we're just like, well, Lord, we're just going to show up and love on you and see what happens. And God is just doing his thing. It's pretty pretty spectacular. Um, remember to mark your calendar. The first Saturday in August is August the 5th. We're going to do a work day here at the church. So if you can make some time to kind of help uh, with that. Um, and then Mark and Laura are going to be here and ministering in the service on August the 6th. Yay! And, oh, thank you, Bridget. July 29th, the last Saturday of this month, is Praise in the Park at Pritchard Park from 6 to 8 p.m. And there'll be some of us leaving here at the church at 5.30 uh, to kind of carpool over there because Pritchard Park, the parking is a little difficult. Yeah, so it's easier and safer for us to walk, to park together, walk together, etc., etc., so on and so forth. All right. Yes, ma'am? I don't know if anyone's asked for prayer for Tess. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah. we need to pray for her as we close out because she definitely just needs a shifting to happen in Jesus' name. All right. Well, let's take a moment and thank the Lord for all that he has done and also to lift up our sister, Tess. Lord, we're so grateful for your sweet spirit, for the way that you just show up every time we open your word. You are speaking directly to our hearts and you are you're revealing to us the things that need attending to. Lord, we thank you for that. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are faithful and just, Lord, to give us wisdom and understanding. Please, Lord, be with our sister Tess. You see all of this stuff that she's facing, and she needs just a special anointing touch from you. She needs to have grace shown to her by those that are, have the rule over her at work. Um, and she needs, Lord Jesus, for you to move mountains in her family. And we thank and praise you, Lord, for what you are doing Jesus' name. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Amen.